Welcome to the Albert and Billy Show, everybody. Listening to us on WUAT Radio and watching us on Channel 18, BTC Fiber TV. And don't forget to check us out on BTC Fiber YouTube. Check out all of BTC Fiber shows on YouTube, including Daryl's Hometown Insight. All the shows are on there, so uh, check them out. We need to get some subscribers. So that's why we keep telling y'all, please uh, subscribe and like yeah. and leave really nice comments. <laughs> but be and, truthful. And, yeah, and we'll be great. We'll be very grateful for that, won't we, Papa? Surely, surely. Now, uh, if you're cold in here today, there is something wrong with you. And if, I know the weather. Oh, please don't turn that off. Oh, don't turn it off? Please. Well, unless, are you it's cold? probably make it worry about well, well, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> but it feels, my point is, it feels this good outside. It's 63 outside today. I, it feels like it, kind of. I love it. I wish it was like this every day. Well, it's minus sunshine right now. Well, I, I hate that part, but the sun has been out most of the day. But I'll I'm take that over see, rain I'm any not day. I'm the rainy clouds in the There you go. Oh. For the next five or seven days. Oh. Oh, that is music oh, to my ears, Papa. The sun. Oh, that's sun, sun. Yes. 60, 60, 60. Oh, that's awesome. Preach it, Papa. <laughs> oh, you get me fired <laughs> up. <laughs> I love it. All right, we got some announcements, and I'm going to be nice and do them all today. Papa's like, oh, you've got the voice for it. You know, give, you know, give me a compliment. Am I right, folks? Am I right? <laughs> So we got, I'm going to have to get a drink of sweet tea here. This is from one of our sponsors, Morgan Brothers. And I do have you a shirt. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I remember, ain't you proud of me? have to bring you a shirt. I know. <laughs> and I, we do keep getting asked about Albert Billy Show t-shirts. Uh, I know it's being worked on, but... Uh, I'm going to check into that because we want to get those t-shirts out there to you guys as soon as possible. So uh, I'll look, I'll, I'll see what's going on with that. Did you tell we... me we had 2,000 requests for a shirt? <laughs> I didn't say that. We have a lot. <laughs> we have a lot. And, uh, Just kidding, folks. <laughs> it is a lot. We do have a lot of requests for these shirts, though, and I don't want to let you guys down. We don't want to let our fans down, so we're going to get those shirts made. One way or another, we're going to get y'all some t-shirts. So, having said that, Papa, uh, we'll start with some of these announcements that are going on uh, in the next few days. Let's see. Now, th well, this is an important one. This is going to be tomorrow. Okay, it's Saturday, March the 6th. This is a fundraiser that's going to be held for four-year-old Caden Allen Rhett Skiles. Uh, he's a young boy who has, now I don't know how to say this disease though. I do not know how to say that. Mylomenago, My, I don't know how to say it, I'm sorry. It's a very, very big word, but, and then this next two is spina, spina uh, bifidia, maybe. It's a, neuro, it's a neurogenic, the first word is, I just don't want to pronounce it wrong, I, and I'm not quite sure how to say it. It's very long. But it is a neurogenic bladder and neurogenic bowel. Wow. So he is in need of a more intense intervention surgery to save his bladder and kidneys, uh, which will be long and difficult mm. the surgery is scheduled for march 11th and after I mean next thursday okay yeah it is next thursday uh, efforts are being made to raise funds for his medical expenses hotel stay and long-term care it'd be long term mm -hmm. planned are a drawing a cake auction cornhole tournament and plates of barbecue, hamburger, hot dogs, baked beans, potato salad, and dessert and drink. Food sales are from noon until 6 p.m. Uh, the auction will be, let's see, I don't want to mess up all the time for the auction. So let me find it again, though. Uh, it's at 1 p.m. 
The auction will be at 1 p.m. The cornhole tournament will begin at 2 p.m. And from 3 until 5, it'll be live music. This is going to take place at the Lust Community Center. Lust Community Center. Tomorrow is to help this family in their time of need. Plates are $8 each. The cornhole tournament is $15 per person or $30 for a team. So I'm glad the weather is going to be good. That's great to hear that because they need a good turnout for this, folks. They're going to need all the help they can get. So uh, keep this family in your prayers and go out and support this fundraiser tomorrow. Um, it's important. It's for a very good cause. It's for a four-year-old uh, little boy that that needs prayers and, and needs your help. Needs okay? a miracle. Yeah, yeah. So needs a miracle. Well, so anything you can do to help, folks. That that is once again tomorrow. Okay. Food sales once again start from noon until six p.m. And after the auction will be at one. Cornhole tourney will be at two, and three to five music. Okay. So that is tomorrow. Uh, we also got soccer registration going on for the spring season. Registration for the spring season of the Blitzel County Soccer Association is now open. Use the blue sombrero link on the Blitzel County Youth Soccer Association Facebook page to register or come to practice at the fields next to Potville Elementary School and register in person. For more information though folks, call Greg Smart at 423-364-1154. That's 423-364-1154. And practice is going to start taking place. The first one will be this upcoming Tuesday, March the 9th at 5 o'clock p.m. Chicken casserole dinners are going to be for sale, Papa, on Saturday, March the 20th. Uh, this is at the Pipeville Fire Department, just right down the road from Papa, literally... Uh, a hop skipping away from you, Papa. I'll walk. He, he can walk easily to this. Uh, it'll be Saturday, March the 20th from 4 to 7 p.m. at the fire hall, of course. You can eat in or take a plate to go for $8 a plate, which will include chicken casserole, two side dishes, a roll dessert, and a drink. Please call ahead for faster service, including curbside service. Wow. Dine in or carry out to confirm they haven't sold out. So that's Saturday, March 20th, 4 to 7 p.m. at the Potville Fire Department. And uh, Saturday, March the 13th, we got an acoustic jam session featuring bluegrass, country, and southern gospel music being held at the Butzel County Senior Center on Fraser Street. Uh, this will be from 6 to 8 p.m. This is for acoustic instruments only. Check that out. That'll be a good event right there at the Senior Center. I don't have an acoustic. No, you sure don't. And uh, that's probably a good thing, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of fire departments. Papa only does electric guitar, right? That's right. <laughs> I'm going to sing. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, fire departments, uh, well, like I said, Pottville Fire Departments is March the 20th. we also got one on March the 13th. That'll be next. That's next Saturday. Saturday. This one's at Fall Creek Falls Fire Department. It's going to be a chili and soup dinner. It'll be from 4 to 7 p.m. at the Fall Creek Falls Fire Department. The menu is chili, chili dogs, chili or cheese nachos, vegetable or vegetable beef soup. Sounds like a good menu to me. Grilled, oh, there's more. Grilled cheese, grilled ham, cheese sandwiches, fruit cobbler to drink, coffee, milk, water. It's $7 a plate. Children 10 and under, they'll get to eat for free and of course all proceeds raised do benefit the Fall Creek Falls Fire Department which makes this a good cause yeah and uh, I think that is the announcements for now 
These community fire departments are a big asset to this county. They really and the are. residents in the county because it has a lot to do with the rates you pay for insurance. Mm -hmm. I know. I've heard you say that before. And you got to remember, folks, it's a uh, volunteer. They're volunteer firefighters, so... And, and it's always know, for a good cause anytime they have an event. Some of those men and women that are yep. involved, it's uh, almost like they involve, they they enroll for life. Oh yeah, they absolutely. Don't, they don't quit. They just keep on. No. And thank God that there's people out there that do love it and want to do it because, like I said, it's not like they're getting any money for it. Uh, I was in the fire department one time. Really? Uh, Albert the firefighter. The the factory next to the cemetery? Yeah. I didn't caught, know this, Papa. caught on fire in 1962. We just moved into our house. Okay. The church was giving us an open house. I had on my Sunday clothes. Mm -hmm. And the fire whistle blew, and here I went. <laughs> Rufus Morgan, Dr. Rufus Morgan was, uh, yeah. uh, he was there, he had a hose and he was mm -hmm. fighting it. They put me up on the roof trying to chop up the roof so that it would oh. stop. Yeah. Instead of keeping on burning, okay. we fought fire all night long. About, <laughs> about six o'clock, I went and got Carolyn's uncle up. He had a shoe store up here in Pikeville. And I got some rubber boots because my <laughs> Sunday shoes were gone. <laughs> Nothing and left, I'd say, of them. We fought fire all night long. Well, one night, one day, we got a fire call. And we took off the fire engine clanging and we went on the street out here where Sam Brown lives. Yes. And the house next to it, I'm not going to tell you the old lady that lived there, but she was a, a <laughs> spinster. And that's the house that they gave us that was on fire. So here we run off no. the holes and we jump up on her porch and we're looking for our smoke. And somebody yelled and said, that's the wrong street. That's the wrong house. So we left, but as we're leaving, that woman came running out and said, what's going on? <laughs> we had a mess, but we had to keep on going. They that poor old lady wondered, why did those men come up on my porch with those poor old <laughs> Poor woman. <laughs> <laughs> but I finally, I finally quit. <laughs> I did not know that Papa used to be a firefighter. I I've, to I've told you I learned something new every, every episode. Well, I, I played <laughs> softball too. I was on a softball team. Played really? Base. That's it. Until I tore the ligaments. I didn't know my, that. I tore the ligaments from my left foot and I was cutting meat. I'll do it. And Merle would let me go home. I had to sit down on a, on a <laughs> stool and cut meat. <laughs> Is that the knee you had replaced? Yeah, that was the knee. Okay, yeah. there you go. <laughs> oh, well. I've had a full life. Oh, man. Apparently, I didn't know about some of this. So that's that's good to know, Papa. But good a, lady, to know. a lady called me last Monday and told me to be there at her office on Tuesday. Uh -huh. One of our sponsors. And she gave me a book. And on the front of it, it's got three arrows pointing upward. And it was uh, a book that she wanted me to use. And it said, Give Unto God. She said, Albert, I want you to write down the other chapters, the rest of the chapters in your life. And it's just a book of empty pages. Oh. So I started Tuesday, the second day of March. And today is the fifth. Yeah. So I've not made today's entry, but... It's interesting reading about my chapters of my life. I bet. I, I read some, That's a pretty, that's a good idea. Sadie Faye came to see me yesterday and we spent the day together. Mm hmm And I read her what I had written the day before. I, I didn't know you was working on that. Are you enjoying yeah. this? Uh, uh, I okay. get a chance to reflect and think back over the day. Well, that's true. That's true. That's always good. We all need time to reflect, and, and, and I agree with that. Faye's in my life now, and so a lot of mm -hmm. what I write about is about Faye. Right, right. Well, but what sponsor? I mean, it's not a big deal, is Lisa. it? Lisa. Oh, oh, I can see her doing it. Okay. And, and listen, she put Thank scripture you, Lisa. in there, Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 4. There is a time for every purpose under heaven. Mm -hmm. 
uh, all these seasons, a time to be born and a time to die. Uh, that's the scripture that she gave me. That that uh, she's just very very wonderful friend. Yeah, oh, I love Lisa. Very thought, very thoughtful. Yeah, absolutely. Daryl, do I have a birthday wrote down? It seems like I have a birthday wrote down for today, which is the 5th. Today's the 5th. Oh, I'll, I'll look and see if I do. I thought I'd... We do. Okay. Uh, a Patsy fan. Uh, who is oh, a fan? Patsy and Tommy. Absolutely. Um, she's a, a loyal fan of the show she watches us all the time uh so happy birthday patsy fan and also happy birthday to martin dewey's oh i know martin and uh let's see uh yesterday we had uh tim simmons and then we had kim uh simmons the, oh, the words at first farmers kim smith simmons and dalton dashke so happy belated birthday to them as well thank you daryl all right well i guess i'm ready as i'm ever going to be for your <laughs> these infamous are, trivia these are such easy trivias today i think that's, we should combine two in that, one that's usually uh code for it's not going to be easy <laughs> it's always opposite day <laughs> now let's suppose that you go to the first ut ball game and you buy a ticket Okay. What is the remnant that they give you back when you give them your ticket? They give you back part of it. What's it called? Oh my God. These are not easy. Uh, well, I mean, I can't. The numbers on both of them. So they give you back the small portion of that total ticket. Is it a stub? A stub. A stub. Okay. Billy, thank you. Billy. That's not hard. It was on. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes they can be so easy that it makes it hard. You know. I apologize for making it so easy. <laughs> How do you buy? What do you call it when you make a purchase of toothpaste? What's it in? Oh, um, uh, toothpaste. A tube. Tube. A tube of toothpaste. I don't know any other way to buy it. I don't either. I say, I say That's that. another no, similar no, question. From yesteryear, a popular recording artist, was a.k.a. The Man in Black. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. I, the other day, I put on a pair of back, back pants. And I had a black shirt. And I just put them both on. I had on the black shirt and had on everywhere I went, you, people said, You're the Johnny K. <laughs> I about to say, well, you, Are you ready for this? He's a man to black that he day. told me to call him John. John. Johnny Cash told me personally to cool. call him John. That's I awesome. Am, his personal secretary at House of Cat. So he preferred and the never manly told me that. name instead of Johnny. Yeah. Um I got to talk to him a couple of times. A couple of That's times. pretty cool. Uh, when, Johnny he took, Cash when he took music awesome. lessons, the finally the lady that was mm -hmm. teaching him sent him back uh, home with a note and said to his mother, don't send him back. How he, wrong he, could he, he be? He only knew two chords, really. Boy, I'm sure that... Is, yeah, but I'm sure that woman regrets that change, not change. helping him. <laughs> she oh, said yeah. to basically give yeah. up, and look what happened. <laughs> he didn't he give up. He didn't give up. He ended up being a legend. A godly man. Mm -hmm. A pitcher, baseball pitcher, from yesteryear... Of course. But he's presently a baseball announcer. His name is John Smoltz. Oh, whom did he, oh he played for the Atlanta Braves. Atlanta Braves. I got to see him pitch. Well, that ain't too yesteryear, at least. I was afraid it's going to be like way, way, way back Well, John when. Smoltz has not pitched in many a year. I know, but some of your, when you say that, usually it's like a uh, long time ago. 1940. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brett Farr's heyday was was spent quarterbacking which Green Bay team? Packers every one of these you just blurted out the answer uh, before I even you. ask the question <laughs> now listen this one will be harder for you great Stephen Foster gave us the state song for our neighbor on the north what is the state song of Kentucky 
And you expect me to know this why? Oh, the sun shines bright on my old lifeline. Help. What you state? Know? I told you. Kentucky. Kentucky. Kentucky home. That's the name of it. My old Kentucky home. Oh, I, I have heard of that. Okay. Ah, thank you, Bill. It's not so hard. <laughs> Stephen Foster was a, a very well known. <laughs> he he wrote somebody one time, and he I've, I've been across the Swanee River. Okay. And Stephen Foster's one that wrote that song way down up on the Swanee River. Oh. He had never seen the Swanee River, didn't know where it was. But he was writing a song, and he wrote a friend and said, "I need the name of a of a river in the South that has two syllables." Wow. And they, and they gave him Swanee, so that's the reason that river is in the song. Wow. I don't even know what to say to that. Well, it's unusual. Yeah. The Kennedy clan cool, gave us our 35th president, JFK. Right. What does the F stand for? Oh, my God. John Kennedy, but F. Uh, uh, my life, I don't know. Uh, I think this should be multiple choice, don't you guys? <laughs> Fitz, 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 it's Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, are you? Now, how did you know to put the rest on that? Because I'm not lying. I'm not lying. That did go through my mind. It really did. But I wasn't confident about it. But as soon as you said Fitz, uh, Fitzgerald, I knew. You first, know, first impulse is usually right. That is true. That is that that is true. All right. Last one. Okay. This is true or false. Okay. Okay, I can handle Kentucky's that. Kentucky's economy leader is oh. tobacco. True or false? Oh, that's a tough one because I would think Kentucky North Carolina. And yeah, I think horses, Kentucky, and bluegrass, and tobacco, I thought, was North Carolina. Could be wrong. True or false? I don't know. I'm trying to think. Well, you're uh, reasoning it out. It's uh, false. False. Yes. What is their leading economic no, no, indicator? No, 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 no. I don't answer it right, so you can just tell us. Whiskey. What? Bourbon really? whiskey, Kentucky bourbon. Really? Oh, boy. Now, so I wouldn't have guessed that. Well, I okay. wouldn't have either. But I like how he adds on to those questions, you know, if I get it right. Now, what what does this mean? No. <laughs> you had never heard about a quarter million dollar quarter horse from that? <laughs> no. When we, went to, no. when we went to Kentucky, Carolyn was, she wanted to drive around and just see the horse farm. Oh, yeah. Every You're, blade of grass under every white fence cool. looked like it had been nipped with a fairnail clip. I know it. They don't call it the bluegrass state for nothing, folks. No, it's beautiful. But we never went into uh, Louisville. We just went to Lexington. Oh, uh, yeah. Whenever you go into Louisville, that's where the baseball bats are made. True. Louisville. Lexington's where the University of Kentucky is. We, we, nice we, college town. We went to there. We went to Lexington more than once. Yeah, it's it's nice, uh, Lexington, Kentucky. And like I said, that's where the Kentucky Wildcats we play. We can see the little carts where one man is in the little cart with a horse. They were on their way to the racetrack <clears throat> and going through town when we were there one time. No way. Just a big, um, uh, I don't know, 20 of them. And they, they just went along in the street just like regular cars, but they had to get to the uh, state or wherever they have the racetrack. racetrack. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, wow. And Louisville, I guess, is where they have the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. Right? Okay. I, I said one time a huge that, that we had been where the Kentucky Derby was run, but that was the first mistake I ever made. He seems to make that same first mistake every week, folks. It you was Lexington that? that we went into, and it's <laughs> Louisville where the Derby's run. Kentucky has been good to us as our little family company. Really? We've done a lot of work there. I mean, there's hey, they're, money, they're our neighbors. Yes. There's money in Kentucky. Old money. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some old money. There's some old money. There's some old money. We got some millionaires in this. Uh, there's a lot of old money here, yeah. We got some millionaires. 
I'm, I'm, I'm not one of them. Right. <laughs> Apparently we're in cattle right now because it's the big thing for this county. <laughs> yes, yes. The three motivators economically in Blissel County used to be coal and timber and agriculture. The historian, I wrote that in Carolyn's book that I wrote about Carolyn, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I checked with our historian after I wrote the book. Miss Elizabeth. I gave her one of the books to read. Yeah. And I said, I want you to analyze what I've said because I did no research mm -hmm. on writing the book. I wrote the book because God gave me every word to write down. Yeah. I never looked for a word. And so she told me after she read the book, she said, Albert, you were right. Those are the three economic indicators that lead Blitzo County. But she said, you also said in your book that the average family was five or more. That's too low. <laughs> Elizabeth, Elizabeth was my teacher. I know. Oh, she was my teacher. And she brags on you. Every time she talks about that, she always brags on you, Papa. Well, I'm... Boy, did you have her fooled, didn't you? <laughs> She'd always, she always tell me that. Oh, he, you know, he was such a sweet boy, hey, such a ever, good student. Have you ever heard of this term? teacher's pet. <laughs> I bet I have a feeling you were her teacher's How many pet. Did that cost you? Yeah. <laughs> Just one a day. And you know, and uh Miss Elizabeth is now a hundred or, or over a hundred years old now. I saw Sudi can't Su tell it. You can't tell it. I saw Sudi in the store the other day and, she, and yeah. I asked her about Sudi and she said well, Yes about Lizzie. Right? Yeah she's I mean like I said you cannot tell it. Cannot tell it. Well, we're going to take a break now. We're going to mix it up a little bit this week. We're going to take a break now and then come back with sports of all sorts, as Papa says, and then Albertology. All right. That's all coming up next right here on the Albert and Billy Show. Stay, Stay tuned. tuned, folks. Oh, it's at the same time in sync, Papa. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Dunlap Mercantile, located in the heart of the beautiful Sequatchie Valley at 15664 Rankin Avenue in Dunlap, Tennessee. Stop in today for some Mayfield ice cream or a cup of community coffee, and if you're interested in renting this venue for your event, call 423-949-2552. Stay tuned to DunlapMercantile.com for concerts and events coming to the Dunlap Mercantile in 2021. God bless. Take care of last day, Dylan. Oh, no, I'm going to lost my debit card. Hey, use that new Mountain Valley Bank app we got. You know, card valet. You can freeze your card so nobody can use it till you find it. That's a good idea, Dylan. Where was the last place I used my debit card? I don't know. Hurry up. I can't stay as late for error. I feel like I'm doing the Lannigan Challenge. I'm gonna end up with lockjaw. <laughs> Thank God. The out freeze is my debit card, Bill, not you. Oh. Ben Buckner here, general manager of Victor Pre on the Dunlap. I'm here to let everyone know that Vitri offers a full service garage open to the public. Our mechanics are ASC certified and locally known and have over 20 years of experience. From our $29.95 oil change to complete car care, no job is too big or too small. Come in and check us out, 15480 Rankin Avenue, right in the middle of Dunlap, Tennessee. What's up, Papa? I'm ready. You're, re you you're ready for sports and Albertology, and we'll get to that. But first, we'd like to thank our sponsors. I, I was on it. 
he was trying to point it out to me, Daryl. Like it's I didn't not. know. Yeah, yeah. Who was he spoils our sponsors, by the way. You may want to be a sponsor of Albert and Billy's show. You're guaranteed homemade brownies. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> so thanks to our sponsors, Citizens Tri-County Bank, Billbury Insurance, Scotty's, the offices of Emma Boynton, Lisa Wheeler, and Michael Walker, uh, Farm Bureau Insurance, go see Matt Massengale and his friendly staff down in South Pipeville by Putnam Reed Funeral Home, Pipeville Family Dentistry right across the street, Caddy Corners, Papa says. Caddy Corners. Uh, on Main Street, The Loom right here on Cumberland Avenue, our next door neighbor. Nickel Row Antiques, which they will be opening back up in just a matter of weeks now, right. April 1st. Uh, the Get In Place, I want to thank them. Gibbs Pools, Morgan Brothers, and The Venue. Uh, we'll be going back there pretty soon. Axe uh, throwing. Yeah, and their brewery is fixing to be open, folks. And you'll get to see that on this show, actually. So stay tuned for that. Also, State Farm Insurance, Nick Smith and his friendly staff right here in Pikeville. And uh, Milldown Outdoor Adventures. Uh, we're, we're wanting to actually shoot an episode there, too. You know, Timmy and Michelle. It's located on the Sequatchie River. Yeah. So that'll be a that'll be a fun episode when we do that. that that'll be pretty cool. So it is time for sports. Sports of also March Madness, baby. It, it's well, it's begun on the women's side. You know, conference tournaments. The Lady Vols play tonight against Ole Miss at seven thirty our time. Seven thirty, all right. On the SEC network. There you go. Because Ole Miss upset Arkansas last night. And Arkansas is a good team. It will be a formidable foe. Yeah, Ole Miss doesn't have a great record, but they're very dangerous. They, they're and capable. And Tennessee only beat them by one point when they're they very, play. Very capable. But Renai Davis, I saw on TV last night, has had five straight games of 20. scoring 20-plus points. So and she needs to keep that up. A couple of those were all in one half. I know. I know. It's like when she flips that switch, that's if she, it. If she hadn't missed that bus on the first half, we'd have had to hold on. I know. Bless they're, her. They're going to they're gonna need that from her to make a good run. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. And hopefully the post players will bring it. That's the key. Davis has to have help. We say that a lot. It is the key to their success. You know she's going to get hers, but you got to have help. But if at this point in the season, if you haven't had it, how are you going to get it suddenly? I don't know, but I sure hope they can figure it out. I really, truly hope they can figure that out because I would love to see them – Win the SEC tournament and win the national championship. Man, that would wow. be nice to see again. It would be so nice to go Kenny, back to the glory days. Kenny would get a raise, wouldn't she? She sure would. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the, the masculine side of the Tennessee basketball team, <laughs> they went to the loveliest village on the plains last weekend. That's Auburn. Mm-hmm. And, and played like crap. Uh, we ranked. We were ranked number twenty-five at the mm -hmm. time, but we came away on the short end of a sixty-six fifty-eight contest. It was pathetic. Pathetic. Fifty-eight points will not compete in this. No, their problem is uh, also a consistent problem. It's will the offense show up? You never know. Never know. Well, the thing about it is, if you were playing Podunk University, you might have won. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they were not playing Podunk University. They were playing Bruce Pearl's team. Bruce Pearl has defeated Tennessee six straight times. Oh, my God, I didn't know that. Six straight times. Ooh. Former don't you know, coach. Don't you know that's uh, a thorn in their side? Yeah, and you know he's loving it. Well, shoot you, yeah, he's loving it. And it might be, all, it's almost to the point where it's psychological. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He probably, well, you know Bruce Pearl really gets up for that game. Well, what I'm saying is with the season about over, mm. our coaches cannot put in print, we've got to go back to the drawing board and get better. It's too late to get better. Right. 
If you well, if you've not got all the problems ironed out by now, you're not going to iron it's them. It's going to be really hard to figure them out now, but we just we have to hope that they can figure it out, you know. But I, I don't know how they're going to. The S, the uh, scoring punch has just about boiled down to Keon Johnson and Springer. They gave I us know, 43 the three of the 58 <laughs> points. Wow. Wow. Three out of 58 points came from those two freshmen. The disappearance of Fulkerson is also a huge part and of the Pons. problem. Yeah, he's not playing at his best either. Not not lately. Not offensively. No. He still got his presence felt on the court in blocking shots. But on yeah. the other end of the court, he's leaving it up to someone else to score. He, he, he needs to uh, reassert himself in the offense. Uh, they need him to step up. He's, you cannot rely on freshmen. But, but Fulkerson, uh, there's an article in the paper about him twice this week. And uh, Barnes said he's not going to wash him away and just do away with him. Well, no. But he's but only averaging about four points a game now for the last several games. I and don't get that's it. No pro that's no dominance whatsoever. You're docile. That's the You're complete not opposite of dominance, actually, isn't it? Last Sunday, February the 28th. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Lady Vols fought Auburn to an 88-54 win. Very impressive. That's the way it should have been on the male side. I know. I know. Davis had a, another big game in that one. But by by winning that game, that gave us a number three seed in this tournament. That's good. It, That's and good. And the tournament, by the way, is in Greensboro, North South Carolina. Yes. I mean, they're playing not the Lady Vols they play tonight, but there's games going on right now as we yeah. speak. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, uh, we played tonight at 7.30 our time. It's old Miss. Davis had 23 points in that Auburn win. Mm-hmm. Fifth and straight, 20, that's amazing. Here's where the post gave us 19 points. Kashtatua. Kaskitawa. Kaskitawa. <clears throat> Kaskitawa. She I love saying that name, Kaskitawa. She gave us 19. But her name is so hard to say, you know. Her first name's Casey, so they call her KK. <laughs> That's her nickname. <laughs> I don't blame them. I call them KKK. You know, uh, well, you can't do that, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding. She's that good. Yeah. When she's on. Oh, yeah. When she's on, she's a dominating presence inside, like dominating to give presence. You 19 points that shows you what the post could be providing <laughs> and you're not getting it no Burrell gave us 14 <laughs> Burrell I can't get Burrell past gave you us 14. <laughs> but uh Burrell is actually the only one that is consistently helping she's, Renai Davis she's that. been given 15 to 18 points for the last several games I know. Uh, I think she is the only consistent uh, threat outside of Renai Davis that we have. But uh, Kishkitawa and uh, Key are, are dominating presence inside. And if they could just play that way every game, they, they really could win the national she's championship. They're that mentioned. good. She's not even mentioned. She didn't do a lot in that game because of foul trouble, and that is her kryptonite. She you know gets what? in foul trouble. I, I think that she moves too slowly, and I believe that causes her to commit some of those fouls. Mm -hmm. I believe the opposing players get in her way mm -hmm. intentionally. They do. They do. And they, they try to get her in foul trouble, and they try to get Kishkidawa in foul trouble because when you take them out, it makes a big difference. Okay. The Lady Vols, because of those two players, they have not been out-rebounded in one game. South Carolina, I think, it was dead even. And that's but they have out -re won. Yeah. <clears throat> but they have out-rebounded all their opponents. I mean, it's those two players are very dominant if they could just do it consistently. If you were to, if you were to analyze the two teams, the, mm -hmm. the male players and the female players on the UT squad this year, Tennessee mm -hmm. was able to beat men. They were able to beat Kansas. 
I know. And the women were able to beat South Carolina. Exactly. Go figure. They're in between. Well, it doesn't make sense, but it does tell me that both the men and women literally have the talent and, and are capable of winning the championship. The consistency is the issue on both sides, but I would love to see them both get it together and make a huge run in the tournament. It'd be so nice to see. Wise, <clears throat> intelligent mm -hmm. would be mm -hmm. the coach that could teach consistency. That's right. How are you going to teach it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Jail is an important ingredient in the process of five players on that floor that mm. gel together in such a way that they are consistent. But see, you keep on uh, substituting here and substituting there because you don't want this one to play too long or that one to play too long. Mm. And so when you get the wrong mix on the floor, it doesn't gel. No. Not at all. But anyway, not uh, all. I'm not the coach, and I don't get paid to coach. <laughs> if I got paid, I would do a better job of coaching. <laughs> Football. <laughs> Football. And by the way, uh, we know what Papa meant, as he was saying earlier, but we do. <laughs> I don't want people to think What about I was saying, the I would want to emphasize the K, 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 as many K's as you know. can say. That's a beautiful name, a beautiful name that they get. They named her. It is, but it they is. can take as many cases as you want to to spell her name. I know. <laughs> hey, I you can pronounce our game again. Kish Tittlewa? Okay, let's see. Cassie Kish Tittlewa. Kish Tittlewa. Uh, there, is, there is four K's in her name, I think. T U A H is on the end. Tua. Yeah, yeah. That is a, a. I love saying it, though. I don't know why, but it's not easy to say. But she doesn't get to play as much as Key. No, well, no, not always, no. But I would love, I mean, I would love to see both of those two players have a, a great game at the same time. If they would, we'd they would be, be unbeatable. We'd be dominant. They, yeah. Okay, I'm going to go back to football again. Oh, football, okay. The spring game that would be played next month. Wow. The annual orange-white game culminates the three weeks that we are allowed to spend in spring training. Okay. The other teams, some of the other teams, Georgia, Auburn, and Alabama, they are allowing 20,000 fans to be in the stands to watch the well, end should. of spring training. They, they should. So it didn't uh, say how, long, how many Tennessee would allow. Probably about the same. I mean, it's, well, it's we, time to... Uh, if you've got a stadium allowing 20,000... Bristol is claiming they're going to have another football game with UT, UT, not this year, but next year. Bristol Good. Speedway. Good. The largest the Bristol amount, Speedway. Which they've the done that before. largest amount of football fans in one stadium ever. Would that be cool. like 50,000? Oh, it was. And they've done it before. They've done it before. I, I don't know what the. I don't remember. Cause, I mean, it's it was, been a few was, years, it but, but, but yeah, it was. You can seat 102,000 in, uh, in Neyland. Neyland State. The, but they're going to have to put a better product on the field to get that many there. They won't get 100. Unless you have a winning. Yeah. Uh, they're going to have to do something. Because uh, basketball is a lot better than foot the shape the football's in right now. That's but one for thing sure. in our favor. We will have some of the patches. We yeah, will true, have some of true. We'll get we'll get the cupcakes back. So we will have some <laughs> games that we will win. Twenty two zero zero zero. Oh, was it Bristol? Two hundred twenty thousand. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. The largest football. I'm glad to College see College game ever. I'm glad to see that. Sounds good. Sounds great. Now that won't be in 21. That'll no, be saying 22. next year. They're saying next 22. year. 22. Knoxville's been talking. I, I, we watch their TV. That's great. Sometimes. That's great. That do something to you psychologically. Uh, well, yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. Anyway. Absolutely. Might get some uh, adrenaline flowing. It should. If, if that don't get you fired up, nothing will. <laughs> All right, we're ready for our Albertology. Yeah. Dr. Seuss. 
yeah. Theodore mm -hmm. Geisel Seuss uh -huh. died back in 1991. Okay. And uh, that's some great movies and stories. He, he would have been 117 years old. <laughs> uh, he was born in Massachusetts. Very prolific writer. Oh, Some yeah, of I mean, the things that he wrote were silly to me. The Cat in the Hat. That's one of the figures I've drawn, by the way. It is, it is. Cat in the Hat. I agree. I mean, I'm just going to say I think it's downright stupid. But a lot of people, a lot of people do but, like it. But, one but of my, the movie is good. The well, movie's good. <laughs> one of my favorite cards that I sent out last Christmas was The Grinch. Yeah. And now, now The Grinch Stole Christmas that, is one of the most popular movies absolutely. seen Absolutely. Christmas. Absolutely. That might be his best one. I would think it would be. Yeah. I mean, it's between that and The Cat in the Hat as far as your most popular movies. For but Dr. Sure. Seuss was voted least likely to succeed <laughs> in, Dar in Dartmouth <laughs> College. <laughs> Boy, did they get it wrong. <laughs> the least likely to succeed. That goes, that goes back to the trivia question about the lady that told Johnny Cash. <laughs> yeah. Don't send stop. him back. Don't send him back. <laughs> he is credited with inventing the word nerd. You're kidding. He invented oh, the word nerd. I didn't know that. Uh, back in 1950, when there, one of the books he published was When I Was in the Zoo. <laughs> no way. Or if I ran the zoo, something. I don't remember what it was. That's pretty cool right there. But anyway... Didn't know that. This past Wednesday, uh, in the newspaper, uh, six of Dr. Seuss's books will not be published anymore. Mm. Why? Because of racist content. I, I'm racist getting so... Racist imagery. Why are they doing this now? Is, this this, is this what, things have been out for a hundred years. This Why is what now? you call nitpicking. It is nitpicking uh, to the nth degree. I'm so tired of that. When he died in 91, everything was left to his wife. And she ran the enterprises that Dr. Zeus had left. Mm -hmm. And it was very successful. But she died then. <clears throat> now there, <clears throat> there is a company called Dr. Seuss Enterprises that handles all the affairs mm -hmm. of his works. Okay. All right. He's been dead for 30 years. But his books, <clears throat> his books garnered last year $33 million. Wow. The I'm sale of the book. That's the answer to your question right there. Not exactly. Not exactly. Exactly. It's ridiculous. Sad. But it shows us that he's still very popular. Oh, yeah. I mean, legendary. But can you imagine Christmas without the Grinch now? You mean they're going to take that one away, too? Well, no, but I'm oh. just saying, could you imagine Christmas no. without the Grinch? No. Well, no matter how they want to take things away, uh, it's not like people forget and, and things like that. Um, I don't know. Just some strange times, strange things. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. So this, I feel like some of them just won't take everything away. Tom Hanks is a very popular actor. Mm -hmm. And he just recently got involved in westerns. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I can't see that. That's pretty cool. Uh, well, it was released uh, December the 25th. Oh, it was? And the name of it was News of the World. It does that not sound a like a western at all. What, what he is, he's a re, he's retired from the Confederate Army, uh -huh. and he goes around from town to town and reads newspapers to people for a dime. <laughs> That's a western. That's a western. It doesn't sound very westerny at all, to but me either. including the name, uh, no wonder I didn't know he had a western. If I saw that name, I wouldn't guess that that's no. a western. But Tom Hanks, some of the most memorable roles that I remember Tom Hanks performing, big was splash, Apollo thirteen, Apollo thirteen. Yeah, he's got a bunch of them. Uh, that the reason the Apollo thirteen was such a problem. An oxygen tank exploded on board, 
and the, yeah. the ship was made for three astronauts. The lunar module would have two in it, okay. and the space module, would, one man would stay on board it. Okay. So when that CO2 thing <coughs> exploded, they didn't have scrubbers that would fit that would take care of the carbon dioxide from three men being in the mm. lunar module. So the engineers down on ground, yeah, they quickly tried to figure out how they could invent a scrubber that would fit in the lunar module. And they mm. did, using parts they knew they had. Wow. And they were able to make the re-entry back into our atmosphere safely. That's amazing. Tom Hanks was that, Apollo 13 pilot. That, that's amazing. But, but I mean, he's, yeah, he's got a bunch of good movies. Toy Story. Who is he in Toy Story? Oh, crap. Is, oh. Is he Buzz Lightyear? No, no. man. Do you know who, who Buzz Lightyear is? I don't. Trivia's over, so just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Tim. Uh, oh, Tim Allen. Tim Allen. Okay, that's right. Well, who's, but who's he's, Woody. Woody. he's Woody. He's Woody. Okay. He's Woody. And has been in all four. Okay. I, I like that. I like that. Saving Private Ryan. Oh, Sky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that kind of sounds like him. But Buzz Lightyear tickles me to that, too. Now, I did not enjoy Saving in private run I just for I whatever didn't reason. see that one I didn't see that one uh, I, I didn't like it that much but he does have great movies but Castaway that's a good one that's a good one the the uh, the the what caught me about Castaway was the lack of dialogue I know here the plane crashes he's the lone survivor I know. and he winds up on this island Oof. And all he has that he that he's able to scrape together is a soccer ball. Yeah, I, yeah, that's right. And luckily, right. that company that made the soccer ball put their name on it. Yeah. So he named that ball Wilson because that was the name of the company that made the ball. Yes, yes. I forgot about that. that yeah, that's But true. then he loses Wilson. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and Wilson has a personality. He gives Wilson a personality. <laughs> yeah, he does. he does. Now listen, <laughs> let me tell you this. They had an auction. There were three Wilson volleyballs used in making that movie. Okay. Recently, they had an auction. One of those volleyballs brought $18,400. Wow. Wow. That's impressive. To he say also the least. was Scully. The movie Scully, Southernburger, that, that landed that yeah. airplane in the Hudson oh, River. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was in that one. I forgot about that. But the movie that I remember that's not mentioned is The Green Mile. Yeah, that, I don't like. Yeah, it's not mentioned. Well, that's a bit. Well, because he's got so many, but the Green Mile's a great movie. Great movie. What was so great about the Green Mile to me was when those guards were able to take that uh, black man out of the prison mm -hmm. to the home of one of the men, mm -hmm. and where he could touch the mother, yep. and heal her, yep. or it might have been the wife. But it was beautiful. It, it, it is. It is. That, it. that young man just passed away this past uh, summer. I know. The black man. Really? Yeah, this past summer. He was so big. Mm -hmm. I man, know. He that, was was, big. that was sad. He, he, he was he, as big as... Uh, yeah. Um, he, he did pass away. I knew that. I hate that. Uh, now, I think maybe... Uh, Splash might have been one of his first movies, and that's a that's a funny movie too. Him and Daryl Hannah, where she's a mermaid, uh, it's a great comedy. Great Did comedy. Did he do? Uh, and Big is funny too. Big, yeah, Big's Big great. The best one. It is. But what was the name of the one uh, uh, where he acted so stupid? Hmm. Uh, so oh well, what I mean, what? Yeah, he was slow in that one, literally. Forrest Gump. Forrest That's Gump. a great movie That's too. Mentioned. How could they not mention those? Forrest the Green Gump Mom, Forrest even, Gump. Those are two would, huge movies. I would think that'd be one of the more more famous ones. It is. It uh, it absolutely is. I love I love that movie. Uh, I love going to the Forrest Gump 
restaurant in Gatlinburg mm -hmm. and your your um, person that's waiting on you ask you trivia questions about the movie as you're waiting for your food. Well, yeah. Papa would fit it's right in. And I mean, and I fun bet people experience. That, it's so that, fun. I yeah. bet people that frequent that restaurant are very familiar with all the... I'm food. sure. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Uh, Shrek. How many of you, How many times you watch Shrek? Is Too many times to count. Or the four of them? There could be. That's very possible. I know there's three. I know Do that. Do you know who is the voice of the donkey? A. Murphy. Wow, you're good. I know. You are good. Yeah. Still trying to pull trivia Donkey. on me, folks. <laughs> Donkey. We're, we're in Albertology, Daryl, and he's still trying to get trivia trying to get in. Trivia out of <laughs> <laughs> the best hospitals in Tennessee, number two, is CHI Memorial. Oh, wow. Well, that's good. S number two in the whole state of Tennessee, CHI Memorial. I agree with that. Number 10 is Fort Sanders in Knoxville. I picked up a body there one night. Did you? Since Fort Back Sanders. in uh, what? Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I would think. I would think. Yeah. Just Vanderbilt. Like Mercer in Georgia. Yeah. Uh, states with the lowest tax burden. The reason I picked this out is Tennessee's number two. Oh. That's one of the reasons so many people move here. Move here. People are moving here like crazy. And they'll, Every piece they'll of tell land you that reason. For sale. I mean, yeah. all of them that were for sale are also Paula's yeah. best this year. Paul is one of Paula's best friends, is a real estate agent in Hamlin. Gloria. Yeah. Gloria. And she can't get enough houses to sell. I know. And a lot of, like I said, a lot of people that move here, they will tell you that is the reason. Because in, in some states, the, it's just getting too crazy, like they can't afford it. Literally. People moving out of the city into the country. Yeah. I, yeah. I hate to see them can't, here, but. I can't yeah. say I blame most of them for that. Well, there's oh, something yeah. about these East Tennessee hills that they like. The beauty. Mm -hmm. The beauty, too. The, the sheer The beauty. people, the beauty, I mean, everything. What's that? Smoky smoke gets in your eyes. That's right. That's an old, that's an old uh, that's, grass hymn. Yeah. Smoky smoke gets in got your eyes. Got the Smoky Mountains. Got the beautiful Sequatchie Valley right here. Uh, you know what, huh? You know what Sequatchie means, don't you? Uh, I'm not, uh, trivia is over, but you can tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it's 65 miles long, and you can see that mountain, and you can see this one. It's true. Probably two and a half, three miles in the valley. Yeah. But the word hog trough, the Indians <laughs> gave us that name, and they stood on these mountains on each side, and they looked at this valley. And they said, <coughs> that is a hog trough. Oh. Uh, hog trough. Wow. Okay, did Didn't you know, know that the <laughs> cigarette lighter was invented before the match? No, I did not know that. The lighter was invented by Who a German would? chemist in 1823. What? That's crazy. The match didn't come until three years later by an English chemist. Can I don't you believe that. No, I, I would not believe that unless I saw it. You know, unless you're here I'm telling not. me. I don't know if anybody knew that. This came out unless of they were just Digest. told that. Came out of Reader's Digest, by the way. I don't think anybody would guess that. Did you know that Adolf Hitler's nephew fought with the Allies? <laughs> no, I In did World not War know II. that. In World War II. No. His name was William Hitler, and he wow. lived. He was a British native and he was oh. traveling in the United States and he joined when World War II broke out. Uh, he was an outcast in England because of his name. Nobody I'm, wanted to I'm, I'm have sure. anything to do with him. I'm sure. So when he tried to enlist in the United States Army, he was denied. But after a sincere letter by President Franklin Roosevelt yeah. and a thorough checkup on him, he was allowed to serve in the Navy. That is amazing. Adolf Hitler's nephew served against him. Well, I mean, I never thought about it, but Theology. in the same in all, uh, you know, evil people, that don't mean their whole family is evil. Obviously, no, no, that's true. But you know, I have, a Christian should. You're supposed to love your enemies. Yeah. But one enemy that I would have a hard time dealing with would be Hitler. 
No, of course. Because of the oh. million, six million Jews that he just annihilated. This I, would pure have, evil, I would not pure want to be. Evil. I would not want to be God when it came my time to deal with Hitler. No, I my, know. My mother-in-law has evil. Some pretty amazing things to talk about. She was a little girl during that time, and she, she's, she's actually, just an amazing. I have person. I have a movie that I loaned to Brother Bill Roberts. Brother Bill, if you're listening, listen. His son I, Bart watches us. I, I I loaned them my movie, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. Oh. And it was about a little boy that was in the concentration camp being visited by a German boy on the outside of the junk concentration no camp. No way. And I loaned them that movie, and they never did bring it back. Did you hear me, Brother Bill? <laughs> Probably on HBH. All right, Brother Bill. I'm Bill sure. I'm sure. Did you know the only state capital without a McDonald's <laughs> is in Montpelier, Vermont? Uh, no way. Carolyn, I've been there. Carolyn Why said. Carolyn said that right. Vermont was the most beautiful state she traveled through. She I had to she agree. Was in Thirty-six states all together. Oh, they don't have a McDonald's. That's the reason it's the most beautiful. I can't believe that. <laughs> but Nanny was point. right about that. I mean, I've been, I think, 30-something, too. But now, the, Vermont is beautiful. In the fall, anyway. I went in the well, fall, I, and yeah. I. it was just... It's breathtaking. It was, really is. And you smell the maple bear. syrup. Oh, I love it. She brought Loved back it. some maple syrup. Oh, it's good. good. It's good. I showed Faye. Faye came to my house yesterday, and I showed her the little uh, container, little tin container that Karen brought back yeah. from them with the syrup in it. I remember that. I remember that. Carolyn saved it, and I, I got it on top of the cabinet. I got to eat some of that syrup. Then I hadn't been to Vermont yet then. I was a kid, and I was Loved it, oh. and then of course I was. Ba I made sure to get some when I went to Vermont. You can buy pure maple syrup here, but you'll pay five or six dollars for it instead of a dollar and a half. Exactly, exactly. Okay, time for some jokes. Yeah, are they are they jokes? Will you listen to the first one? Sometimes he'll say it's a joke, and it's six political not. job holders were carrying the body of a man that had been killed into an undertaker's parlor. And the undertaker was very annoyed. He said, why didn't you bring this man's body here at three o'clock as you promised? It's now after six. Sorry, replied one of the men, but we had to wait until the five o'clock whistle blew to find out which one was dead. <laughs> <laughs> now that's funny, Billy. That was. That's a joke. Now good, listen, good job, Papa. Now listen, you, you people that are re Republicans, you listen. <laughs> a Republican candidate in a house to house canvas was trying to persuade a voter to vote for him. Right. And the voter said, no, my father was a Democrat, so was my grandfather, and I won't vote anything but the Democratic ticket. Well, that's no argument, said the candidate. Suppose your father and your grandmother had been horse thieves. Would that make you a horse thief? Ooh. No, then I would have been a Republican. <laughs> Now you could turn that around and like that be a democratic joke. Either. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that's funny. All right, Mrs. Delay, she's <laughs> meeting a politician at the party, and she said, "I've heard a great deal about you." And the politician said, "Possibly, but you can't prove it." <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. One. That is. That is so true. Who, father, is that gentleman? Said the small boy, small boy, pointing to a man standing on the dais at the National House of Representatives. <laughs> and the father said to the son, "That's the chaplain of the house." Does he pray for the members? said the little boy. The father thought a minute and said, Well, no, my son. When he goes into the house, he looks around and sees the members sitting there, and then he prays for the country. <laughs> <laughs> one more? Don't blame him. Sure, yeah, one more. A politician one more. was invited to give a talk on Americanism to the pupils of the grammar school where he had attended as a boy. 
Okay. When I see your smiling faces before me, he began in the accepted oratorical style, it right. takes me back to my childhood. Why is it, my dear girls and boys, you're all so happy? He paused for the rhetorical effect and instantly up went a grimy hand from the front row. Well, my lad, what is it? The reason we're so happy, replied the boy, is that if you talk long enough, we won't have a geography lesson this morning. Oh. <laughs> That's smart. That's smart. I remember being in school, loving it when we had a special guest like that. I, to get remember, to go to chapel and not have. A yeah, I was like, yeah, talk, talk away, talk the whole class if you want to, <laughs> talk an hour, please. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that's that's very true. Well, those were good, Papa. Well, those were good. Good, good political humor there. Well. That's it for Albertology and sports and trivia, even though he kept trying to bring trivia back in all segments of the show today. Uh, you guys saw that firsthand, didn't you? <laughs> but that is it for this edition of the Albert and Billy Show. We'll see you guys next week for an all new episode. So uh, take care and have a great week. We'll see you next time. So Bye, long, folks. Brought to you by Bledsoe Telephone Cooperative, your full-service telecommunications provider right here in the Sequatchie Valley.